We have reached the last football game of the football season. No, no, wait, wait a minute. The UFL is getting set to start. We have reached the last football game that matters in the football season. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can you smell what the rock is not cooking right now? Um, with all due respect to the UFL or whatever it is these days. This is it, man. Like, I don't know. I go back to July when it was 115 degrees, and you think about the six, seven months that went down and, um, you know, this buck season that was kind of crazy and roller coaster and, 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 you know, made you a little nauseous at, <laughs> while riding the, the wave there. And then, you know, here we are. Um, if, if I could have, and we say this all the time, Steve, I, I within, if you gave me four teams every year, I think I'd have about an 85 to 90% chance of telling you who's in the Super Bowl. I truly believe that. Because I don't think there's more than four or five teams that can ever win it. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I, I don't know, and I would say this. I don't know necessarily, although he's the greatest quarterback in the world with Patrick Mahomes, so it would be a bad, probably omission, but I don't know that I would have had the Chiefs there. Probably would have if I thought about it. I would have had the Ravens. And they made the championship. I mm-hmm. definitely would have had the 49ers. I don't think you'd have had the Lions. No. Had they made No. Most likely not. Although, That's true. although but they going, been, in, going into the season, like, really good, getting mm-hmm. close. Yeah, maybe the divisional round or mm-hmm. maybe even the championship game. But I, I, I don't know that I'd had them in the championship. Certainly not in the Super Bowl. Um, but, I, yeah, and, you know, there's always the, okay, so – you know, is Buffalo one of those teams? Uh, you didn't know Joe Burrow was going to get hurt. Would, mm-hmm. would Cincinnati been one of those teams? Yep, the right? Eagles so were you, one. Yeah, Eagles would have been one for sure. And for the first half of the season, they sure looked it. And they were ten and one, so almost three quarters. Um, yeah, and and would I've would I've had Dallas there? Eh, probably not, because I'm not a believer in Dallas. I, I just think we've seen that movie so many times. You know what I mean? Like it's like a sequel, you know, to some series that you watch, you guess like, you know, what's the one with the cars, you know, that they always have the, the chase and, and, you know, grand, whatever it is. They, I don't know. I don't even see, I don't even know the name of the series, but (laughs) there's a series of movies with the the cars that run through the streets. They still fast and furious, fast and furious. It's kind of like there's a million of those. Yeah. Vin Diesel. There's a million of those fast and furious. It's like, I'll watch it, but I know how it ends. Right. Like that's Dallas to me. Like, it's entertaining, but I already know how it's going to end. So, yeah, that's that's sort of. In, but I but Kansas City didn't think they had the receivers at one point. I thought they're never going to make it, and then yet you 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 cannot discount. There's no way you can discount the greatest quarterback right now in the planet that's playing. Okay, because because Tom Brady, as I sit here, I think is still retired. So, if you say, well, the Chiefs, Andy Reid. I don't know how they're going to do it, but let's put them in the mix. And San Francisco, absolutely. I would have absolutely said that they're one of the four teams. Um, and there were times, you know, when they lost three in a row, that they certainly had their hiccups and, and didn't look that great. And for that matter, they trailed, you know, they've trailed, I think, in every playoff game and have had to come from behind. But here we are, the Chiefs and the Niners, which is a repeat uh, of a Super Bowl that I went to uh, in Miami. And the Niners had a 10-point lead. Jimmy Garoppolo, boy, it seems like a 1,000 years ago, was their quarterback. 10-point lead going into the fourth quarter. They couldn't hold it. He went 3 of 11, I think, passing, missed, missed a wide-open receiver for a touchdown. And then Pat Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes comes back and wins Andy Reid's first Super Bowl. And now, now Andy Reid is suddenly becoming a fixture, as is Patrick Mahomes, who could win his third Super Bowl by the age 28. And... The guy he's chasing, if you if you want to say that, in terms of you know, rings would be Tom Brady, and he won three by the time he was twenty seven. But then he went ten years, I think, or thereabouts. He was in Super Bowls, but didn't win one uh, for about ten years. So, you know, this is there's a lot of legacy at stake here, especially on the Chiefs side, right? Um, and then also for a guy like Kyle Shanahan, who has been involved in not one, but two of the bigger Super Bowl collapses. One, the biggest one of all time, when he was the offensive coordinator of the Atlanta Falcons that were up 28-3 to on Tom Brady um, and lost. And then he had a big hand in that. And then, of course, the one I just mentioned against the Chiefs in Miami. So 
he certainly could rewrite history if uh, if he's able to get his first. But this game, you know, it's it, uh, Las Vegas is not always the best barometer, but they seem to kind of know where the money's going, and it, it's a very even game. I don't think – last time I checked, I believe San Francisco was favored, but I don't know by more than two points or so. Um, so that said, I, I kind of think it's going to be that kind of game. I think it's going to be, you know, close. Um defenses will have a lot more to say about it than maybe the offenses. And the thing that's underrated is the Chiefs defense. They got one of the youngest defenses in the NFL, which is really special. And they're second in yards allowed um, and also in in points allowed, 17.3 per game. And they've only gotten better in the postseason, not in yards allowed, but also you know in, in points. So they're playing really, really well. And then, you know, you've got some marquee players on the 49ers defense. So defense wins championships. And so I'm just wondering if uh, Mahomes, who, who hasn't need, needed to score a lot of points, has sort of, he's sort of evolved now because he doesn't have Tyreek Hill and these guys to kind of managing the game, playing a complimentary game, letting the field position win for him, and then, you know, scoring touchdowns when they get down in the red zone. So, um, it, it's it's a it's a different matchup than we're used to with Mahomes in a Super Bowl. I think it's going to look different on the Kansas City side. It is, although the one thing in this postseason too, we've seen that receiving core look better overall. They take, have gotten better. Take yeah. out Kadarius Tony, but everybody else has looked better this postseason than what they look coming down the stretch, and that's right. helped them a lot in this postseason. Uh, and and the magic that Mahomes has with Kelsey. It's unbelievable. And, yeah, you know, if it's a tight game late, if if Mahomes needs to make a drive, I mean, the way those two ad lib together yep. and make it look scripted, mm-hmm. even though it's not. Did you say scripted? Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. I knew you had to go there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> it's Ta- sorry. Taylor will be in the building somehow, somewhere. <laughs> yes, she will. Yeah, Karma is her boyfriend, or in this case, Travis Kelsey is her boyfriend, as the song goes. Um, it it is, you know, the, 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 we'll get into the Travis and, and, and Taylor thing, but I really think there's this Super Bowl for certain individuals and you think about the quarterbacks, right? There's so much on the line for a guy like Mahomes who could just continue to soar. If he gets three by the age 28, then you're going, okay, Brady played till he was 45. And then on the other side of it is a guy like Brock Purdy. And I've heard so many, you know, there's so much stuff. And of course, Cam Newton is coming out and saying he's a game manager and this, that, and the other. He's the 10th best player on his offense, all this kind of stuff. All I know is that if you go back and watch the championship game when they were down and he brings them back, everybody said, well, what's he going to do if he has to bring them back? He made a ton of off platform non-scripted plays where he had to duck under pressure, you know, got out of a sack the way Baker Mayfield does, um, extended plays, found open receivers, ran the ball. Like, you know, I I just I think it's unfair because the guy comes in as the Mr. Irrelevant or the seventh overall pick and maybe physically he doesn't wow you and he's got a ton of weapons. Okay, well, not his fault that, you know, the 49ers have drafted well or – Sign good players, and they have a lot of good weapons. You know who also had a lot of good weapons? Jimmy Garoppolo, right? Uh, Trey Lance, guys that they had brought in that couldn't get it done. And this guy comes in as a seventh rounder. In a few years, he's their starter and winning, you know, more games than they ever imagined. But he's not. I don't. I don't think he's getting credit for what he's doing because what he's doing is playing the position at an extremely high level, but when needed, he's creating plays. He's making them himself. Not everything has to be perfect for him. Maybe he's not as flashy as, you know, a Patrick Mahomes. Nobody is. You know, he he can't do those kinds of things. He doesn't have that arm. Um, but he 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 reads things out very well. And and so much of quarterbacking in the NFL level is anticipation. You only have less than two and a half seconds. And so, you know, that defense is going to move after the snap. You know, can you get the ball to your playmakers? Can you anticipate? Can you throw guys open? Because you're not 
waiting for a receiver to get open and throwing it to him like you do in college or high school. It's you've got to put the ball in certain spots and trust that your guy is going to run that route outside the hash or the or the or you know the the different landmarks of of the of the route and he's going to be there. And I think Purdy does that as well as anybody. And Kyle Shanahan is one of the, is you know arguably the best play caller in football and has been for a while. So with all those weapons, it just seems to me, Steve, that San Francisco is great as Mahomes is great, unbelievable. He's won games. He's found a way with this team. But San Francisco with Christian McCaffrey, with Debo Samuel, um, you know, uh, the name escapes me. The 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 tight end Kittle. is phenomenal. Kittle, um, you know, you can go down the list. They're loaded. I mean, there's five, you know, one A type playmakers, A plus playmakers on his side of the ball. He's got to be the point guard. That's what good quarterbacks are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's that's what they are. And if he does that, I just think that the capacity for the 49ers, even against that defense, to score points, because I think it's always about, you know, that that's the game, score points. And I just think the capacity for them to score points is even higher than what Mahomes can do. Because God forbid, like you just mentioned, Kelsey, Fred Warner's a pretty good linebacker over there. They got, you know, they got some dudes on that defense. Mm-hmm. If if they did nothing but say, okay. Kelsey's not beating us today. We're going to bracket him. We're going to double him. We're going to hit him at the line of scrimmage, whatever. We're not going to let him get off. He'll get a couple catches, but he's not going for 100 and two touchdowns. If you do that, does Mahomes have enough? I know he's got Pacheco as a running back. I know he's got guys, but does he have enough to score enough points to beat the 49ers? I'm not sure he does. I don't know either because I just don't. I still wonder which receiving core shows up for Kansas City. I think, you know, I look, I, I think San Francisco is going to basically try to take Kelsey away. Easier said than done, but take him away. And make Valdez Scantling beat you. Make Pacheco beat you. Make, you know, go through the list. M- uh, McKinnon may be back for them. Well, the kid, I mean, Watson, who was in Tampa as a practice squad player mm-hmm. sometimes and, and yep. was never a – a starter at any point, he he has to make big plays for them. He does. And and you know, I think San Francisco's defense is is good enough. It's loaded. It's loaded. Stars. I mean Chase Young, which they brought over, right? Uh Eric Armstead, you start with uh, Hargrave, which might be their best mm-hmm. pass rusher, Bosa. And then you got Greenlaw and Warner. And then, you know, in the secondary, I mean, uh you know, to Javarius Ward and um to Sean Gibson and guys like this, like they at every level they have Pro Bowl, sometimes all pro talent, and they should be able to match up with what, like you said, is, is sort of an underwhelming array of of, of weapons. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that the Kansas City is here, to be honest with you. But the games I've watched, um, their defense and, and Mahomes has played to their strength. He's not turned the ball over. He's not, you know, like if you think back to the Super Bowl, the Bucks won in Super Bowl fifty five. You know, he he ran what they said was the equivalent of like 500 yards and was throwing balls, you know, half an inch off the ground, sidearm, mm-hmm. hitting guys in the face mask, like doing everything he could do. But it just it wasn't going to get done. And the Bucks didn't allow a touchdown. Um, and that's with Tyreek Hill and those guys. Now he's kind of throttled that back and said, you know what, I'm I'm going to play a smarter game, take care of the ball, play to my defensive strength, field position, run the ball here shorten it up, and then in the red zone, absolutely rip it and score touchdowns. And then he's been able to do that. He's got to do it one more day. And if he does, this will be, to me, uh, uh, this is this will be his third Super Bowl victory. I think it would be the most impressive one because he has, he has done what great quarterbacks, the greatest quarterbacks do, and Tom Brady did it for years, elevate the guys around him who aren't particularly mm-hmm. great, but in those moments he makes them better. Yep, and, and learn patience. Yes, you know, absolutely. You know, it's it, we're comparing him now to Tom Brady because right, of the run right. he's on, and mm-hmm. this year he became more like a Tom Brady quarterback. He absolutely did. You know that just take the loss, take the mm-hmm. take the take the incomplete pass, take the don't force it. Just be patient. I've got a good enough defense. Like, mm-hmm. be patient. Play within the game. Take what. Take what the defense gives you. And that's what he's done yeah. this year, which is what's been frustrating is a lot of times 
They should have had more, but receivers kept dropping passes. And they did. They he, did. You, you know, he was he was being patient, and his teammates were letting him down for a while. And you saw that frustration on the sidelines for a while, uh, late in the season particularly. And, yeah. and they've gotten better in this postseason, which is why they've been able to, to roll to the Super Bowl again. Yeah. And, and now, you know, their, their offensive line is, is not stellar. I mean, Don, how about Donovan Smith is playing to win another Super Bowl ring, a guy that they ran out of here on rails. Um, and I don't think he's had the best of years. I don't think the, the offensive line is a strength of their team, mm-hmm. either tackle, to be honest with you. Um, it looks like maybe their guard, uh, Joe Tooney, is going to be out. So that, that remains to be seen. But, yeah, you just, I mean, you know, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, uh, who's from here, but Justin Watson is a starting receiver on this team. Rasheed Rice has been the guy that stepped up, and and there seems to be a little bit of chemistry with Mahomes. Um, but it's really Mahomes throwing guys open. It's 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 Isaiah Pacheco, you know, running the ball and running as hard as anybody can run. Um, they they don't have a ton of weapons, and so this will test the greatness. You know, of Patrick Mahomes. If he wins this game, this is akin to some of the you know the unimpressive looking Patriots teams that Tom Brady dragged across the finish line. You know, he didn't always have Randy Moss. Um, and the defense was always a big strength of the Patriots, especially early in his career. Um, but you're right. I I think that Mahomes has been more Brady-esque in his sort of, you know, mastery of the position and his ability to win games and win them different ways um, than he's ever done before. And that's 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 what greatness does. You know, at the end of the day, we were going to judge quarterbacks based on how many, you know, how much hardware they bring home. And, you know, he's got a chance to, to win his third. There's a couple guys named Joe Montana and Terry Bradshaw with four. And then there's the GOAT, right? And so, you know, at his age, at 28 years old, assuming good health, they're going to get better. He's going to play for a while I would imagine and you know what and and Andy Reid could coach till he's 70 easy and if he does that that's the other thing like we kind of chatted about this before the pocket like Andy Reid all of a sudden I know you know Belichick didn't get hired and he's going to be like 72 73 by the time if he gets hired next year right maybe he goes to Dallas and gets him over the top whatever but he needs I think 14 wins to chase down Don Shula well Andy Reid if he coaches five more years he could Leave his leave the game as the winningest coach in NFL history, and I remember all those years in Philadelphia when they couldn't get over the hump, including when the Bucks beat them. That was maybe the the most you know confident I've ever seen an Eagles team before that they were going to the Super Bowl and going to win it, and they didn't. And they, of course, they did go to the Super Bowl and lost uh, under Andy Reid. But it, for forever, his legacy was yeah, good enough to get you there, can't get over the hump. And now, now what do you got to say about him if he wins his third right? And he's been to four, and he he coaches for five more years and goes to two or three more. Like it, it's really something that you know this guy. And but but people forget that you know he won sometimes with lesser quarterbacks. You know, mm-hmm. um, I know he had Donovan McNabb, but he also had Alex Smith. You know, and he was always winning. Uh, you know, no no matter what, he had Michael Vick for a while in Kansas. Like he, you know. Whoever he he lands on, he finds a way to win ten games or, or twelve games every year. So he's he's also got legacy on the line. It's it's intriguing. I don't, it's not like I think they could have found sexier. You know, Kansas City's sexy because of Mahomes and because of Reed and, and what they what they stand for and how much how long they've been there. They went fifty years, fifty years. I was listening to uh, uh, Lamar Hunt's son that was that was talking about the Chiefs and and now. You know, here they are in their what fourth Super Bowl in the last what five years? Yep, I want to say yes. I mean, that's incredible, right? You go fifty years between Super Bowls, and now you're back almost. It's almost an annual event. Like that, that just doesn't happen, man. You just don't see that very often. I know going further back, you know, the Bills had all those Super Bowl appearances. They lost them all, but yeah, they went to the four Vikings, in a row. Yeah, four in a row was extremely rare. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been teams that have won them. We know about the dynasty of the, of the Steelers in the 70s. They they went to four in six years and won four. Um, you know, so obviously the 49ers in the 80s and, and, and the Cowboys in the 90s and things like that. But this is, what is a dynasty? I'd say, I'd say Kansas City's pretty close to that, right? Like they would sort of own 
this decade uh, if they're able to pull this off. And uh, on the other hand, the 49ers is a proud franchise, and you know you feel you feel great for John Lynch. You feel great for a guy like Shanahan that's been so close, and he could change his history personally. Um, but they've won five as a franchise, and this would be their sixth. Um, I think only the Steelers have that many. So there, there's a lot, a lot. Well, right, the Patriots on. have six, or the Patriots have six. That's correct. Yeah, Tom Brady. That's right. Yeah, and the Patriots. So. You know, they could put themselves in an elite company. They already are an elite company. Um, but, uh, and, and I truly, I don't, I don't know what to expect because I, I, I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. I think these teams will fill each other out. I think their defenses are both really, really good. And yet you could look up and one team could have 35. I mean, it just, you just don't know the momentum and how, how Super Bowls go because very often they're not close games, uh, even though Las Vegas seems to think they're going to be. All right, our picks are coming up. You don't want to miss those because I know you guys are going to run right to your bookies and uh, and do what you got to do. Uh, for the past 14 years, the skilled pros of May Electric Solar have been installing solar energy systems in Florida. They provide the most reliable solar equipment, the best installation methods, and service while helping homeowners cut energy costs in an environmentally friendly investment. May Electric Solar uses their own skilled employees, never subcontractors. They've always offered the safest and most reliable equipment. Well, now May Electric Solar offers a 30-year no-cost equipment replacement and labor warranty. That means for 30 years, May Electric Solar, backed by Solar Insure, means that your roof, electrical, and equipment replacement is all covered. Now, Solar Insure even survives May Electric Solar. It is owned by the homeowner with no deductibles or additional fees. This policy will transfer to new homeowners with no fee. This is not a blanket insurance policy. In fact, only the best contractors are allowed to be part of its program. May Electric Solar's reputation and history of workmanship has earned them this membership. For more information about May Electric Solar's installation and their 30-year warranty, call 727-819-2862 or visit mayelectricsolar.com. All right, as we're doing this podcast, breaking news, NFL Honors, of course, is on. Uh, and bah, 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 we have a comeback player of the year. Now, DeMar Hamlin, might- right? Well, he came back from, mm, I don't know, death, right? Uh, and did not play many games, but I mean, what does comeback mean to you, right? And then you had guys like, I don't know, Baker Mayfield, who, you know, was with four teams in about 16 months, uh, found a, a home in Tampa, Florida, went out there with a new offensive coordinator, never called plays before, you know, and he throws for 4,044 yards and 28 touchdowns, and he takes his team – to win a, th- a third straight um, division title, upsets the Philadelphia Eagles in the wild card game, and damn near upset the Detroit Lions, who went on to the championship. So hell of a year for Baker. That That's a pretty good candidate. But no, it is not Baker Mayfield this time. It was Joe Flacco, who came back from nobody wanting him, from the couch. Well, I guess came that's the ultimate from- comeback then. That really is. I mean, hey, Joe, you want to come back and play? Sure, I'll come back and play. And he and he got in, and he did tremendous things for the Cleveland Browns. So everybody must have been really impressed with that. So the, the key is don't start the season on an NFL roster, and you got a better chance than if you're the guy who actually does something for the whole year. But I digress. Um, just kind of interesting that uh, that Flacco was the guy. Yeah, that's a bit of an upset. I guess we did check our script ahead of time. I don't know. I thought Baker was that was part of that, but maybe <laughs> kind of glad he's not because I'd be typing right now. But that's okay. Um, okay, uh, our, we mentioned our pick. So, listen, I kind of hinted at it, and you should never do this. It, it, it's like betting against Brady, who did lose a couple of three Super Bowls. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the 49ers get their Super Bowl, and that uh, John Lynch. We'll be up on the podium there with Kyle Shanahan and those guys. And I just think that it's their time. Uh, they are resilient. They have come from behind in their games. I think Brock Purdy won't be overwhelmed by the moment. Um, I think he's a better playmaker than people give him credit for. And I think they got more juice. I think they got more juice on that offense. And I think it's going to be about scoring points. Who can score points in this game? And I just think that there's more playmakers on that side he was great as Mahomes is. And if he wins it, hats off, man. It'll be one of the greatest, you know, achievements, I think, in Super Bowl history with the lack of receivers that he has. Um, but he's he's that great that he could he could 
drag them across the finish line somehow. Um, and, and another thing that doesn't make any sense is that I'm going against the script of the NFL and the whole Taylor Swift Kelsey thing. Like that is a, that is not a good place to be if you're me, because my kids root hard for the chiefs because of Taylor Swift, because of Travis Kelsey. And so I'm going to be a minority in my own home. Uh, and you tell me when have those two crazy kids lost this year because they haven't, (laughs) she's flying back from Japan. The dateline works for her. She'll make it home in time to see this game, uh, it would not would not surprise you, and then everybody will definitely say, well, it's rigged because, you know, the Taylor and and, uh, uh, and, and Kelsey thing. But um, but no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that this is going to be the 49ers time. But what do you say? Who do you think? Who you got? I got Chiefs 31-20. Okay. Wow, 31. Yep. I think Mahomes figures out a way. I, I think you give Andy Reid two weeks. Well, that's a good point, plan. too. Yeah. I think – the creativity and the, you know, Mahomes ability to ad lib mm-hmm. against a really good defense. I think I, I just think he I think he'll figure out a way to do it. He's special if he does it, man. He's he's right there with the greatest of all time and would have his third Super Bowl by age twenty eight. It's incredible what he's what he's been able to accomplish. So looking forward to the game. Should be a good one. Um and then uh, we ha- did we talk we talked a little bit about uh, Mikhail service chef the other day uh, now we know he's had surgery and and the the actual injury as we found out was not good and, and we were suspected as much but we know the details now yeah he had surgery on Thursday to stabilize fractures in both the tibia and fibula in his left leg ouch uh, expected to return to Tampa in the next few coming days to begin re- rehabilitation immediately no timetable for his return mm. uh, Cooper was asked before the game on Thursday night, uh, could Sergeyev come back in the playoffs? And he said, I'm not a doctor, but we'd have to go very deep for that to be a possibility. Yeah, I would and, think I, so. and my guess is not even then, but I'm not a doctor either. So, mm-hmm. Kind of looked like to me, it looked a lot like the, a couple of years ago, the Dak Prescott injury where, you know, you have two fractures down there and maybe even a dislocation of the foot or ankle or, and, and probably some ligament damage. So, um, Who's to say, you know, just just how soon he get back on the ice? I don't think it'll be this year, but uh, unfortunate for him. Obviously, he had been out for like what sixteen days or so with another injury, and then he just gets back on there and has that mm-hmm. kind of a freak thing. I I don't know that anybody's really at fault for that, Steve. It looked like he just kind of lost his edge or something. Yeah, I mean, you know, he was in a, a puck battle with Lafreniere, but I, I think he lost an edge, and then that's the kind of stuff happens. There was nothing dirty of it. it was, yeah, yeah, it was you know, just unfortunate and. You know, I'm sure Lafreniere feels just as bad. And, yeah. I mean, you saw the Rangers out on the ice when he was, you know, going off on the stretcher as well. Yeah, that's not the way anybody wants to leave a hockey game, and yeah. um, they all felt bad about that. And speaking of hockey games, so now New York, New York has not been good at all for the Tampa Bay Lightning. They lose their second in as many nights this time to the Islanders. Didn't have a Walk lot of back. energy. Yeah. Um, I, you know, part of it back-to-back, part of it the layoff, part of it may have just been the circuit chef hangover too. I mean – Possibly. Um, You know, he just got hurt the night before. And you didn't have to fly last night. You bust out to Long Island. Right. Um, But, you know, it can, can, I mean, that's a nasty. That's not just a guy getting hurt. No, it's an emotional day. It's an emotional injury. And and I think guys, you know, you can say this, whether it's hockey, football, whatever. When you see something like that, um, I can't really relate to it. I played baseball, although I did see a couple guys get beaned. uh, And... If you're on the field and you see something like that, it makes you think, you know, when you're up at the plate or when you're out on that field, you know, you, you just a reminder that, you know, some gruesome things can happen out here. It's not the safest of places to be. Um, and so you got to get that out of your heads. I don't, I'm not saying that that's not an excuse for losing, you know, to the Islanders, but um, it is th- that, that emotion is, is energy that's used that's not directed towards the game and, you know, does take much to get you off of it. But, uh, they needed they needed to get some points from this road trip. The, the thing is, they were playing so very well, and then of course, you know, the break came. Yeah, I mean, you probably th- the the break it came at a bad time for the Lightning. I mean, you never want to turn down rest. You want rest. Every team in the NHL is is gets a week off around the All Star break, so it's not like they're alone in this. Uh, you know, as far as getting the time off, but a couple things at play. One, they had won eight of nine going into the break, so. You lost all that momentum, and they were playing really good defensively going into the break. But, two, when you came out of the break, and, and John Cooper talked about this too, 
Okay, so Wednesday night they play the Rangers, but the Rangers had played two days earlier. So they already had a game coming out of the break. And the Islanders played Monday night as well. So when you played them on Thursday, so you played a back-to-back coming out of the break. Meanwhile, the teams you played had already played a game before you played them. You know, Cooper said, you know, hey, I get the break and it's part of the game, but maybe you should play teams, you know, that have had the same amount of break when you come out of it. But, you know, that's the way the schedule goes and, and the Lightning need to win those games. Um, and now they've lost two on this road trip. So now you need to salvage the road trip. Now you're at Columbus Saturday night, which is a very winnable game. And then you've got at Boston on Tuesday night. You really need to win both these games just to get half the points on this road trip. All right. And in baseball, I guess this is a good thing uh, for continuity and certainly for these two guys, but uh, the Rays extended the contracts as Eric Neander and Kevin Cash, who is, of course, you know, two-time manager of the year. So that that all makes sense to me. Uh, absolutely. It had to be done. Um, extremely important for this organization. What, you know, started with Andrew Friedman and Neander and company have taken over and how many guys of theirs have gone out elsewhere and the other race continue to just keep winning, winning, winning. All they do is win. No matter what, um, what. Kevin Cash has been a phenomenal man. I mean, who would have thought that replacing Joe Madden that when they hired Kevin Cash, kind of an unknown to most people, would you could put on the same pedestal as him. I mean, Madden's gone on and won a World Series in Chicago in that, but Kevin's still very young in his career, mm-hmm. and he's been phenomenal here. And what, five straight postseasons now for the Rays? Yeah, I mean, I think he, at this point, I think he's at least matched or and or exceeded what Madden did with the Rays. I mean, mm-hmm. Madden overall, of course, going to a, a, yep. you know, a place like Chicago where they hadn't won for over 100 years and winning a world series puts him in a different sphere. Um, and he's back in the, in the Tampa area. He was doing his thanksmas thing, mm-hmm. I think up in Clearwater and I heard him, uh, on, on some of the stations, but it was his birthday um, Thursday too. It was his birthday. You're right. He turned 70. He says, Se- Hey man, 70 is a new 50, man. That's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Let you know when I get there. But, uh, but yeah, he's, uh, it's good to have him back. And, but yeah, I mean, you would not have thought that like usually you don't want to be the guy after the guy right you want to mm-hmm. be the next guy because it's hard to replace uh, uh, someone as popular and as successful as joe and yet kevin who is from here you know from tampa and uh, sister spark little league and florida state and all that just a tremendous story and he does a great job i mean if you're around him and i've been around him some you've been around him a lot more steve mm-hmm. um I don't, that's that's a difficult job. Baseball manager is a difficult job, and it's a long, hard job, and a lot of travel. And you're responsible for just a ton of, uh, uh, you know, personalities. And you think about the number of players that the Rays run through there during a season. Um, you know, it's not just the the 25; it's 40, 45, 50 sometimes. And and for for Kevin Cash to keep that many guys focused and productive and uh, their eye on the ball and all that stuff is really difficult to do. And he does it in a, in a very natural way. He's just, you know, you know, self deprecating, a uh, great sense of humor, um, loves the game, smart as hell. Uh, there's nothing you, there's nothing I can, I, you can say that I, about Kevin Cash that's not positive. I just, I don't, and you don't come across many people in sports like that, you know? Um, but he's been the perfect manager to follow Madden, and 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 you know obviously one of the greatest in his you know profession. So yeah, good for him. Good for Eric Neander, who has done some smart things. You know, I don't think anybody foresaw the Rays with that historic start that they had last season, winning ninety nine games again. They've just got to find a way to once they get in the postseason to uh, get hot at the right time. Those short series is, can be difficult, and of course, scoring runs has always been uh, sort of their Achilles' heel, but. Um, You'd rather have a team in my – I've always thought this. You'd rather have a team that's in contention every year and, and think that one year you're going to break through, right, than, than have one that, that, you know, is rarely there or there every 10 years and, uh, and whatnot. So uh, the Rays will be back again. They'll, they'll threaten for the AL East, and we'll see where the chips fall. But um, those two men are, uh, are very important uh, to the Rays, yeah. and especially when you think about the stadium coming ahead – in mm-hmm. a few years and all of that. So well, and, and, um, and the risk they've taken this year again, not signing many free agents. Absolutely, you know, absolutely, and, and making room for these young guys to come up and see what they can do. And but and I, I think it's exciting. Yeah, you know, no one's no one like a few years ago when they did this, and everyone predicted a hundred losses, or someone did. 
I did. I got my hand up. <laughs> I'm not, listen, I I'm not going to run from that. No, I know. Hey, you man. never have. You never have. I, I said they were going to lose 100, and I was absolutely right until I was wrong. And uh, I, I was whoa, whoa, wrong. One of the few things I've gotten wrong, but I was damn sure wrong about that. Yeah, it's and a good yeah, thing it wasn't could, a mailbag question. Good good point. Yeah, because it was would have been guaranteed. But you know what? Um, they have found a way you know, to know when to give the younger players their opportunity, you know, and, and mm-hmm. they're such a good farm system that they, they're, they, they're pretty tuned into who their guys coming up are, you know, and what they did last year, what they've done grabbing, you know, guys, free agents that have, you know, made it here, uh, that other teams kind of gave up on has been remarkable. I mm-hmm. mean, second to none in baseball, I would put their evaluation ahead of anybody's and, so who are we to say that this is a bad idea? Because I remember last year was all about, well, you didn't get a left-handed bat, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that didn't seem to hurt him at all. Well, and it was, oh, Josh Lowe, he stunk. Yeah, or, right. Or, you know, who's Luke Raley? Who is Luke Raley? And he was, yeah, he was smashing the ball out yeah. of there all Esau the time. Esau Brady's a phenomenal season. and Right, right. Who's going to play first base, you know? Mm-hmm. Is, is, that, is that guy any good? Like, um. And they got, look, I mean, tremendous questions facing them with Wander and all of that. Like, it's not going to be easy because, you know, you, you're counting on a couple of two superstars and you've lost arguably the best player in franchise history, um, uh, for now anyway, and that that's not going to ever be easy. But they'll find a way to do it. So, yeah, those two guys are integral parts, and I'm not surprised they, they uh, locked them up, but it's, it's awfully good for the race. All right, so we will be back. Uh, that game on Monday starts around 6.30-ish, well, I think. Sunday, time. so if you wait till Sunday, Monday, you'll miss right. it. Yeah, don't wait till Monday. We'll be back Monday. <laughs> we'll be talking about the game on Sunday. And what, uh, 6.30 or 6.40 is usually kickoff? Somewhere, somewhere in that area, way. yeah. Then you throw in the halftime. Like, it's probably more like a closer to a four-hour game. But You excited uh, about the halftime, Usher? Yeah, I like Usher a lot, you know. Uh, he calls it 30 years in the making. I can't believe it's been that long, but yeah. Well, I can hear doot, 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 doot. Like, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. I, I can roll with that. So who who comes out with him? Lil John? Does, uh, who else comes uh, out with him? You know, I don't know. That Yeah, that's a good question. There'll probably be no, numerous people, I would think. As long as one is not Taylor Swift, um, uh, that's not in the docket probably, but... Uh, the question is, how many up, times will they show Taylor Swift watching the halftime show? She'll be rocking it, I think. I think she'll be she'll be up there dancing with mm-hmm. with uh, Brittany Mahomes and and company. Brittany Mahomes, by the way, an SI swimsuit model this year. So really, she's. I thought SI folded. Model. Oh no, it still exists in in certain forms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, a lot of the writers got laid off. I know that that wasn't good. No, but that might have something to do with unions and things like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll be back Monday to talk to you about that. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the national holiday that is Super Bowl Sunday. Be safe out there. And uh, thanks for listening, as always, for Steve Burstink, Umrick Stroud of the Tampa Bay Times. Have a great day, everybody.